And welcome back to the Cover 3 Podcast here on CBS Sports. That's Bud Elliott. That's Tom Fernelli. That's Danny Cannell. I'm Chip Patterson. Very excited uh, as we have an interesting activity ahead. It was one that was inspired by a mailbag question that we kind of set to the side because we knew we needed to give it some more time to breathe, more time to live. Uh, It is based on the idea, as you can see from the headline there in your podcast feed, the next team to make its first college football playoff appearance. It's a discussion that we've sort of kicked around a a couple times throughout the years, but uh, we are going to be breaking it out. We're making all of us uh, put some, some reputation on the line as we go to bat for these programs. We're going to draft them. We'll have 20 uh, picks, five rounds, all four of us. Uh, We will get to that in just a little bit, but first uh, as a, Knoxville turns, um, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to jump in on this just the, with all the latest and there, there seems to be, uh, you know, no real movement, but certainly the conversation has been ongoing in terms of Danny White looking for a new head coach at Tennessee. I, I wanted to see based on either what you're hearing or what you're feeling tea leaves or reports. Do you think that this is going to be a, um, process that is going to be moving quickly over the next month um they'll say do you think that when the Vols start spring practice they have a new head coach and if so who would be some of the names that you would keep your eyes on or do you have any feels about the search well i I absolutely do think that they're going to uh to have a head coach hired by spring practice i I think they might have one in in the next two weeks i think denny white wants to get that head coach uh, you know hired and get him in the system The, the key here i think is is threading the needle, right? We know Tennessee is probably going to be bad for a little while and you need to have a head coach who can have enough excitement to keep those boosters and those donors going and keep them excited for a coach who's going to get you through the bad time and then maybe come out of the other end and actually lead you to something, right? And that, that's you know potentially a hard coach to find. I don't think he wants to just find a Band-Aid coach. The Band-Aid coach is probably you know the, the secondary option, which you, know, you need somebody to kind of lead you through the, the potentially, you know, hard times if they do end up having sanctions and whatnot. Um, man, if you're Billy Napier here, you have a lot of leverage, assuming that, that Tennessee actually wants you. I mean, you, you could ask for the Matt Rule or the Mel Tucker type contract and, and, you know, get seven or eight guaranteed years effectively. I would probably take a look at Lance Leipold. I just don't know. Like, is he exciting to Tennessee fans? It, it, after they lose three games or you know, win three games and he's at the, the booster function next year, like, are they going to they're going to pull out their wallets? I, I, I just don't know. Um, but I think Danny White's going to go offense. And I think he's probably going to go somebody who has head coaching experience just because of, of the complexity of the situation you're dealing with. Tom, I know you want P.J. Fleck uh, out of the suburban Illinois, suburban Chicago schools and uh, in the SEC. He certainly seems to be one of the names that has picked up some steam over the last little bit. Uh, who are, are you kind of in line with that? What's what, what are your latest feels on this? I mean, I I wasn't surprised to see PJ Fleck has been, I guess, the report from Football Scoop said he's been vetted for the job. I I do think that like what but you were just saying, but like if if they're looking for somebody who can kind of bring energy to the program to help get through, it'll probably be a couple of, you know, average years at best. I think PJ Fleck is probably the kind of guy who could do that because A, he's been at two places now. And he's proven that he could build up a program and, and turned it into a winning program. We took Western Michigan to the Cotton Bowl last year. Minnesota won 10 games, beat Auburn in a bowl game. And then, I mean, this year, obviously, it took a step back. But they were missing so many players due to COVID that I, I really have a hard time holding 2020 against most coaches the way results went. But I think that would be a very interesting hire and a very good hire. And, yeah, personally, just from a selfish aspect – I wouldn't mind getting him out of suburban Chicago high schools because I don't know how appealing Tennessee is compared to Big Ten schools. So it would help Illinois recruiting efforts a little bit. But other than that, I think like you like you said, but I think Lance Leipold would be a very good hire for Tennessee as far as a football coaching aspect and as far as somebody that they the type of coach that they need to come in there and build a program and set that kind of foundation. It's just as far as selling it to the fan base. I really do not think that would be an exciting hire to Tennessee fans at all. No, No, that's, that's like, that's like drafting. It's like drafting, like having a top five draft pick and taking the offensive tackle. It's like, yeah, we need him and he's probably going to be good for us, but it's like, you can't really get too excited about drafting a tackle. So I I feel like that's the kind of choice that would be, but as far as where it's going to go, 
I don't know. I feel like it could easily end up being somebody we haven't even considered. It's I, I totally hear what all you guys are saying. And I totally agree with everything you're saying, but like how shallow is that? That you're going to basically hire someone so that your fan base is excited, but does the fan base at Tennessee really have any room to complain about any hire that Danny white makes after what trans what transpired with Jeremy Pruitt and Greg Schiano and that whole fiasco. Like I get it. Like I think, but I do wonder like, and I think saying that it's somebody we might not have even talked about might be the best case scenario. Like let, like I, and I do think Danny white brings in some cachet, which you don't get with a lot of athletic directors where he can kind of, he's got a nice contract behind him. He can say, you know what, this is my hire, you know, and I know you need money. I know you need booster support, but it would be nice to see somebody stand up, make a hire and say, that's who I'm going with, get behind it or get off the boat. Like literally the boat, like I did the row the boat, but no, somewhere along those lines. Cause I do think all these names are like the trendy popular names and Lance Leipold might be the most qualified. So if he is, then make the hire, you know, like, and say, you know what, you guys are going to love him when he wins us, when he gets us back to relevance and it may take three years, but he's the right guy for the job. I just wish somebody would have that type of fortitude to do that but I don't know if it'll happen. Okay. Well, you, when you talk about his cachet and uh, sort of almost the, I don't know how athletic directors have swagger, but it sure seems like he's got it. And he's got Has anybody have, I haven't seen one person say, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is a good hire. Like everyone's been yes. Slam dunk. Got it. You know, it's basically comes from the Kennedys of the athletic director world. Like this is like a, a family affair that has rich tradition. His dad, his brothers and sisters, like everyone's in athletics. He cut his teeth at these stops along the way. Like he's got the perfect resume. I have no idea if it works out, but everyone has applauded this hire and including myself. So like, if you've got all this backing, maybe it gives him the confidence to, to make a move that we don't see coming. Well, if he's got all that confidence, I'm thinking like, go get James Franklin, right? Like the the Tennessee fan base yeah. will respond if everyone else is like, wow, that look at who they were able to get. Like that's the the names we're not talking about. I've hit my I've hit that point of this conversation where I'm like, all right, who would be the hire that would continue in this line of of Danny White just having a bunch of uh, confidence and being able to make a great sales pitch because Lance Leipold could be a very, very good coach. But if you get Penn State's coach, um, that's like that alone should be able to get uh, Tennessee fans feeling like they won the hire. Here, like with James Franklin, is, is the rivalry deep enough? That James Franklin, like I wouldn't be surprised if one day if James Franklin left Penn State for an SEC job, if it's the right SEC job, and maybe he thinks Tennessee is the right SEC job. But considering what he did at Vanderbilt, would he take the Tennessee job? Is the rivalry Does Tennessee that deep? want to pay that kind of money, like that right too, now? Because he's already making seven million a year at Penn State, right. so mm-hmm. you're gonna have to give him probably around nearly ten to convince him to leave what he has there to come to Tennessee. Mm. Very interesting. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll of course be talking about this pretty much uh, almost every show, just as there continue to be new developments. Uh, and as Bud mentioned, you know, this thing could happen in the next two weeks. Uh, so we want to, we want to make sure that we're following all the twists and turns. So keep your eyes on the names that uh, have been thrown out, but also the fact that Danny white has made comment that he likes making hires that the media is not on to. So hooray. Now we've also got that to consider uh, in our prognostications. Okay. Urban Meyer to Knoxville. Urban Meyer mm-hmm. leaves the Jags. <laughs> comes the, I mean, Lane Kiffin's not coming back, right? Are we sure? <laughs> no, no, I'm no, pretty I'm, sure. I'm pretty He's sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you read Armin Katayan's book and then you, you square that with what, uh, with what the chancellor said comments was, I, I don't think they want to go back down that road. You're referencing uh, the system, right? Was the name of the book, and yes. it's the Orange Crush, uh-huh. the the yeah. hostesses that were being sent out to woo recruits, and Marcus Lattimore's comments about their effectiveness on him and other players. Yeah, yeah, this might not be. Uh, I mean, so that would be the same reason why Hugh Freeze is probably not going to be getting the job, right? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, if you go on for 20 minutes about how we need to do things the right way and, you know, like, like ethically and stuff, then that kind of X's out Hugh Freeze, probably. Yeah, probably. Okay. We'll Unless be- you just want to fire the president and then, you know, that person who made the statements is no longer there. And then you could fire, you know, make your football coach hire and then get a president. Did, did they give Danny White that much power, though? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. All right. Uh, on to the business at hand for this show. Uh, this initially came in as a, a mailbag question. So we thank you for that, uh, for your nice comments. Remember to get in future mailbags, leave us a five star review. And then in the review, put your question for the mailbag. We'll add it to the big old bag of mail. Um, here is the, the stats. So far in the seven years of the college football playoff, 11 different programs have made the college football playoff. Now, four of those 11 programs actually account for 20 of the 28 potential slots. That is six each for Alabama and Clemson, four each for Ohio State and Oklahoma. Uh, Of the remainder seven, Notre Dame has only two appearances and then six schools, LSU, Oregon, Georgia, Florida State, Michigan State, and Washington have one appearance each. That leaves uh, a lot of very proud programs and a lot of programs that have invested heavily in chasing championships still as we enter year eight of the college football playoff era without a single college football playoff appearance. So, We are not only going to make some predictions in terms of who those next programs are going to be. We are going to be drafting them five rounds, four of us. Bud, you have inherited Barton's first place spot. Uh, We often go back to our locks records. And if you remember Danny getting really aggressive on championship Saturday, turned in a three and six week uh, right at the finish line to end up uh, losing by 0.3 units to Barton, 60-51, 60-51 for Barton, uh, Danny at 63-54. and 54. So uh, you get the first pick. Danny will get the second pick. Tom, 57-52, and 52, will be the third pick. And I, after my 55-60, and 60, which again included a 2-6 and six in the last regular season week and an offer uh, back in week 13. Woof. Uh, that I will be bringing up the rear. So I will be in the fourth spot. We will be uh, snaking. So Bud and Chip will have uh, two picks at the turn. And Bud, the first pick, I, I don't want, I'm, we're not going to let you trade out of it because it's too much fun to, to have to pick one. Okay. Who are you going with for the first pick? So I, in doing this, I, I, I tried to figure out like, okay, which teams do I think could really make it this year? Mm-hmm. And then I wrote that I wrote them down because obviously we're trying to figure out the first team to make it who hasn't made it yet. And then after I got through with those, which was pretty quick, I, I think um, I got to some teams I think maybe have the talent to do it in a future year or maybe would have to get really lucky, you know, to do it this year. Uh, but there's one team to me that stands out as probably having better playoff odds because of the talent and the path and the league in which it plays uh, this year, and, and that's USC, right? You, you, you get you get Keaton Slovis coming back. I don't know that I really trust Oregon to take another step. I think, you know, Oregon this year could have been really damn good if they, um, you know, had not uh, had not had all those opt-outs and had, had the weird COVID year. But I, I think USC is moving in the right direction somewhat, and they, they have a lot of skill talent, and obviously they have quarterback Slovis. So it for me, it was pretty simple. I think the, the drop-off here is pretty, you know, pretty, pretty huge. So USC it is. How much did path – was that probably the, as you were trying to do a deal breaker for those top three, four, maybe even five teams that you wrote down first, is that probably the the tiebreaker for you? I mean, I, I don't pick again for another seven picks. So like, for instance, <laughs> I don't want to take Iowa state because they're not the favorite in the, the, the big 12. I think this, this was the year to get Oklahoma, not next year. Right. If you put USC in Iowa state spot, I'm not picking them. If you put USC in a and M or Florida spot, I'm not picking I mean, granted Florida lost a lot, but I'm not picking them. Path is, is a huge, huge part of making the playoff. All right. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, on, on my board, I've got teams up at the top that I think are better than USC. And if we're in a vacuum, I would be taking them before USC. But once you once you consider the path, that's why USC was at the top of my board, too. Mm. All right, Danny. I'm going to go. I'm a believer. I'm going to go with Sark. I'm going to go with Texas. Um, 
You t- I, I think you have to, I mean, it's funny. Cause we're going to do what we're going to do 20 picks. Yeah. I think half of them have zero chance. Like, just to be honest, like, <laughs> I, I think it's just like an exercise and then, but this is just to make the playoff. Right. Yeah. yeah. It does. I mean, okay. listen, Washington okay. and Michigan state have shown like right. those are, are your, like when we especially get into round two, three, and four, like we are looking to pick the team that is going to lose 38 to three to Alabama in one of the semifinals. Right. Um, so I'm going to go with Texas one path to get there. Not going to be easy, but they've already been with Tom Herman. They've been pretty competitive with Oklahoma. It's not like they're just, you know, it's not like picking a team in the ACC where there's no, there's just a massive gap there. Um, I think the defense is going to be better. They've got seven returning starters. I, this, I, if you guys can't tell in the tone of my conversations about Sam Ellinger, I think he's a good quarterback. I don't think he's a great quarterback and you have to have a great quarterback. So I think even though they lose a ton of experience, I think they might get a better quarterback, which could help elevate them to the next level. Is it Casey Thompson? Maybe. Um, B. John Robinson, who we saw in the bowl game looks awesome. Like I, the other thing is this, this team just has talent. Like I'm looking at the, uh, composite rankings for 24 seven. And I think you have to choose from teams that are in the top 20 and based on last year's composite rankings, I know they lose some Texas is at five. Like they're right there behind Georgia, Alabama, Ohio state, Clemson, and then it's Texas right there. So I think there's a talented roster. I think it just needs the right guy taking that next level offense wins, especially in that one defense got some, some experience returning. So I'm going to go Texas. Did you at least think Sam Ellinger was iconic? <laughs> in, in Texas lore? Absolutely. Right, like, well, that's all that counts. That's all that matters. Our yeah. life forever in Austin. All right. Well, those two were in my top three. USC was one. Texas was three. So that means I'm getting my number two team here. And we talked about the path. And this is a team with a bit of a more difficult path than the first two picks. It's just, we have a precedent in the playoff era from seeing two teams from this conference reach the playoff in the same year. And this is a team that nearly made the playoff this year. And I don't think it's a likely scenario, but I do see a scenario in which if the defending national champion, Alabama Crimson Tide, do take a little bit of a step back in 2021 with all that they've lost and with all the changes that Saban is once again, having to make on the coaching staff. And again, I don't think that's going to happen, but if it does, I think the team that might be best positioned to take advantage of that slight step back is my first pick, the Aggies of Mm. Texas A&M. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's my number two. I had Texas at one A&M at two. USC at four, which means I'm left with some picks that I hate. (laughs) I'm going to go. I was really hoping someone would get it because I don't think they happen. This happens next year. But if I'm just generally thinking about, um, you know, how close a team could have been. And it was the, it was three points. It was a shoe that was thrown. And then it was six points. So with my pick at number four, I just got to stick to the big board. My number three team, I've got uh, Florida as my first one. And then at the turn, it is a one-year only special. This is not something that I'm necessarily going to come back to. But with everyone back on defense, with a legitimate Heisman Trophy contender at quarterback, potentially like the only time that this program's had a a really dynamic game changer at quarterback. This isn't no Chris Keldorf. This isn't Oscar Davenport. This isn't Jason Stanisek. This isn't uh, TJ Yates. We're going with the North Carolina Tar Heels and Sam Howell because if they can knock off Clemson, that is a team that can go and lose in the college football playoff semifinal. So give me North Carolina for uh for my first pick of the second round at uh at number five wow i mean the florida pick i totally get i think north carolina is a little bit of a reach (laughs) they don't meet the talent uh necessarily the talent has been improving and it was a very very young team 
but uh, I've I've got teams, you know, Bud Elliott, uh, our esteemed colleague here on the Cover Three podcast, uh, you you de- you created the blue chip ratio. North Carolina's blue chip ratio does not mean, and blue chip ratio is just for a national championship, right? Mm-hmm, not necessarily right. the college football playoff to be able to make it. Uh, North Carolina's blue chip ratio is improving, but I still think it's still far, far, far from championship level, right? Yeah, if, if you were to have like like a draft of, of teams that can actually win the title, North Carolina doesn't belong near the top, right? But like we've seen a, a teams with a pretty wide disparity of talent make the playoff. That Michigan State team was talented, but they weren't, you know, national title caliber talented. That Washington team, you know, kind of similar. So I, I, I don't hate this pick. I, I had them fourth. All right, Tom. Well, I'm going to take the team that was fourth on my list, a team that does not meet the blue chip ratio requirement of winning a national champion, but I think does meet the requirement of being a legitimate college football playoff contender in 2021 with a path that won't be easy, but is a path that almost finished just this season. I'm taking Iowa state. Mm -hmm. All right. And that would be another like 2021 play, right? Yeah, that's that's I mean, let's they they beat Oklahoma during the regular season and it's not like they got blown out in the Big 12 championship. So there's a situation where if they get to the Big 12 title game next year and they're facing Oklahoma, I think Iowa State can beat Oklahoma in a game. I don't think it's that crazy to think of that circumstance happening. And we saw the respect that this Iowa State team was getting from the committee, even though it had two losses. And one of those losses was to Louisiana early in the season. So I think that with everything they've got coming back and the coaching staff, which I believe in, and I I think that Matt Campbell's still going to be there next year, I think this is a team that could get through the Big 12 and win it with one loss. And I feel like if you're a one-loss Big 12 champion and you've beaten Oklahoma at least once in that scenario, then you've got a pretty decent shot of getting one of those final four spots. All right. I'll go with a team... That is um, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Is that the saying? That that is the saying. That's the saying. (laughs) Just making sure I get it right. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Wisconsin. They they they've gotten there. They've gotten to the Big Ten championship, and then they just come up short, right? (laughs) They've been years where they were used. The 56 nothing year comes to mind when Ohio State needed that win impressively, and they just it looks like they're a different talent gap there. Uh, eight guys returning on defense, seven on, uh, or excuse me, eight on offense, seven on defense. Graham Mertz up and down, like showed flashes of brilliance. Give him another off season, regular season where he can actually start to improve. We saw f- glimpses of it. I just, I trust Paul Chris to have a competitor out there. They're on the weaker side. No offense to anybody else, Northwestern uh, included, because Pat Fitzgerald loves to, uh, put you know bulletin board material out there but i think wisconsin's got a great chance to once again be back in the big 10 championship game and if they are it's a one game scenario maybe they're playing for it early next year they play notre dame which if they could win that game september 25th at soldier field all of a sudden propels them in the national conversation so i'm going to go with wisconsin see i i I, I look at that situation it's like i get it because i feel like wisconsin like I don't know what you're about to pick, bud, but I wouldn't be surprised if the team I'm mentioning right now is one of the two picks you're making. But it's it's interesting to me that the first team we chose from the Big Ten isn't from the Big Ten East. It's it's Wisconsin, and it's because they have really been the dominant factor in the West. So they're kind of like always in a situation where, hey, they're just kind of one game away. If If they catch Ohio State on the right day and beat them, bam, they're in. Haven't they shown up to Indianapolis 12-0? Like yeah, with under with the goose egg in the loss column. No, I don't think they were twelve and zero. Iowa might, was. Yeah, Iowa was Iowa undefeated. Was. Yeah, but then again, got it. Got can't win that one. All right, mm-hmm. bud. All right. Uh, so I I had Wisconsin eleventh. I, I think that's that's a very reasonable range for them. By the way, um, I'm going to go ahead and stick into Big Ten here for for both picks, Ooh. and Wisconsin has, probably has to beat Ohio State to get in. I'm going to take two teams that can maybe get in without having to beat Ohio State. Just play them close. Don't don't get blown out. Stay high in the polls. Get a little chaos elsewhere. Give me Penn State and give me Michigan. Mm. Two teams that can recruit at that that super elite level. Uh, two teams that have a lot of name value to pollsters, so they'll usually you know start high enough 
in the polls. I mean, I, I'm, I think we're at this point, we're kind of done for picking teams for, you know, for the 2021 year. And I'm just trying to think about in the future. You know, if, if you give me two shots at that, uh, I, I feel pretty decent that one of those two teams will make the playoff uh, before some of these other teams on my list. The uh, I was waiting for that because Michigan is such a talent play. Like the, the talent level at Michigan has been high. You look at the awful record against Ohio State, and it's easy to think of them as lesser than, but that is – that is a t- the the pieces of that car are good. Like it it can go and win a race. We just haven't been able to see it yet. And uh, and I guess you would say the same is pretty much since Penn State's been closer. That one felt like like I had Penn State at six on my board, and that was the they've been knocking on the door. Like they've been right there. They've even been a Big Ten champion, but not in the college football playoff in the college football playoff era. Obviously, this past year was really disappointing, and I don't know if. I'm, I've talked myself into them being uh, a, a big step forward, but it, if we start to zoom out, like you mentioned, beyond just the 2021 plays, yeah, you got to go with Penn State. Uh, you just be based on like a, a talent level that is in place. You know, guys, especially if they do expand this playoff earlier than we think it might happen, then you get some at larges in there. Then, then this could really happen. Yeah, see, that's it. I'm, I'm approaching this from a four team situation. So shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about the expansion angle. No, what? this is this is only four team. We'll have to, we'll have to do a redraft <laughs> if we go to eight. Then you're swinging a little deeper. All right. All right. Hold on a second. Cover three, fam. We got to remind all y'all that we've reached that point in the year where there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of sports going on at once. We're talking NBA, college hoops, hockey, not to mention the NFL playoffs and golf, which is why we wanted to tell you about the CBS Sports app and how it's not only the best scores app for your phone to keep track of all these sports, but it's also where you can get breaking news alerts, stories, many of which were written by us. The standing schedules and team pages have all been redone. It's everything that you're used to, and it can also be a television. That's right. If there's a game that's airing on CBS, that That means it is streaming for free on the CBS Sports app. So download it, re-download it. If you look at it and it's got that little cloud next to it on your phone, we'll we'll make sure to download it again. And look, we know that the the five-star mailbag is a great way for you to get to us. But why don't you also go and give a five-star rating to the CBS Sports app? If you do, tweet us a screenshot along with a mailbag question, and we will use it for an upcoming mailbag episode. So thank you, Cover 3 fam. Go and check out that CBS Sports app. It's been redone. A lot of hard work has been put into it. And that's why we want to make sure if it's not already a part of your, uh, the way that you follow sports, well, then you need to go and check it out. Again, screenshot yourself, given a five-star rating to the app, along with the mailbag question, we will use it on a future mailbag episode. All right, we've seen a couple Big Ten teams off the board couple SEC teams. When will we start to see those other SEC teams, an SEC West team, another Pac-12 team? Does anyone even have a group of five team on your big board? We'll find out next. Okay, just to review for the listeners, round one uh, in order, USC to Bud, Texas to Danny, Texas A&M to Tom, Florida to Chip, round two, North Carolina to Chip. Iowa State to Tom, Wisconsin to Danny, Penn State to Bud. Bud kicked off round three with Michigan. Danny, the floor is yours. I'm going to go. So I was looking at a team that I thought had a chance next year, and I'm not going to go there because that would be a long play, but I don't trust it. I'm going to go SEC because you've got the same line of thinkings that we, uh, that we have with Texas A&M. You don't necessarily have to win the division, can still get in. I'm going to go with Auburn. Mm. Auburn, talent will be there. Brian Harson, I think he's an outstanding coach. I think he's assembling a staff that's pretty impressive. Um, I know the Bama problem is there, <laughs> which is just the elephant in the room. But I just, you know, hey, I think he can recruit with them. I think X is no. I think the offense will be better. Maybe he can maximize Bo Nix, get him to play a little bit more consistency, but he is pretty athletic when you see him there. Uh, so I'm going to take Auburn. That was next on my board. Damn it. Uh, hmm, now I got to do a little thinking here. Love watching Tom's faces on these <laughs> when, when you take his pick. 
I'm an emotional man. YouTube.com slash cover three. You can watch all of Tom's faces as we, uh, as we make these picks. This is, this one's kind of a longer term pick, but I feel like it's, it's still a pretty decent value at this spot of the draft. There's work to be done, but I think that we've seen enough that there aren't a lot of teams left available in this draft that have actually won national titles in what would be the BCS and college football playoff era. And this is a team that a program that has been down recently, but it could get back up. It could, it could dust itself off and it, it could get to the top of the mountain. Once again, I'm taking Florida state. They've been in the, they've already made the playoff. Oh, sh- first yeah, that's one. Right. All right. Well, they're taking Miami. Boom. No! <laughs> oh man. We have just done a same new- exact speech, <laughs> but you replace Florida state with Miami. I thought you were going Miami because you said they won titles in the BCS era. Yeah. Same. You know? Yeah. Hey, I forgot Florida State was in the very first one with Jameis like being blown over Whoa. by I like to, I like to forget that too. <laughs> so I was gonna go Miami. That's the team I was talking about that I was gonna make a run this year, like say this year, and then I checked out their schedule. <laughs> mm-hmm. Miami plays Alabama, App State, and then Michigan State first three games. Resume Maybe. losses. Yeah. But, you know, we, if I, we'll see what happens with, uh, I, don't, I don't know if the ACC is going to, you know, click back to divisions or whether they liked the no division life, but you just got to win the coastal, you know? That's what I was thinking too. Alabama yeah. is their season opener though, right? Uh, yes. See, that's the thing. If I am playing Alabama, I would rather do it in the first game of the season when they're working in a bunch of new key parts and coaches than later in the year. And you might have an, an excuse for the committee. Look, mm-hmm. De'Aaron King wasn't fully healthy and recovered. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> very good point uh all right so we've done a, a real nosedive from ones that i felt like i could make a, a pretty strong argument for either in the you know miami not necessarily like could be a 21 play uh, i do think that it's miami and north carolina in the coastal division but you could also just say look i i believe that miami can build back to a point where it can make it to the college football playoff now i've got to really make some tough uh arguments i think that I was my first one uh, to round out round three. I think that the Iowa State position this past season was not all that dissimilar from where Utah was at the season prior. Now, Utah's had uh, a lot of success in the Pac 12 South. Kyle Whittingham's been probably one of the most consistent coaches. And when we go back to the reason why USC was the number one overall pick, we go back to the idea of path. I. I have one more Pac-12 team that I might consider. It is all the way down, sort of near the end, uh, with Pitt uh, at the very bottom of my board. (laughs) Now we know Pitt's on your board. How many teams did you rank that Pitt is on your board? Like, you know, this is only five rounds. (laughs) I wanted to keep some entertainment value ones out there, but I, I think that Utah, based on how close it came in 2019, the success that it's had in the Pac-12, I know that we're not talking about a talent play. I know that we're not talking about even like one of the real, the iconic brands that's going to be able to mobilize and create a lot of resources, but the level of consistency and the level of success under Kyle Whittingham, I'm going to go with Utah uh, as my third pick uh, in the, uh, in the playoff first timers draft. And okay. My next for your fourth round pick. (laughs) No, 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 no. And then, uh, all right, just just stick to the big board. Don't overthink this. Um, I'm gonna go with Iowa. You know, I I think that the we there hasn't been Iowa doesn't have a ton of like even does Iowa, Iowa football had its really good season in 2009. I feel like we're always seeing Iowa be what nine and three. Mm-hmm always seeing Iowa be a, a team that's really solid top 25. It, it is asking a lot to take that group and have it, you know, make the next step and be, and be a team that can make it to the college football playoff. But uh, as we mentioned before, if they showed up undefeated in the big 12 championship game before, then, you know, maybe they can be in a position to do it again. Uh, don't ever think this chip, just stick to the big board. We're going Utah and Iowa for my, uh, my picks at the turn. I am relieved 
because we saw, you know, Bud, you let off the draft with USC, Path being one of the key reasons. Chip, you just mentioned Utah, Path being one of the reasons. Of the other Pac-12 South teams that weren't USC, you did not take the one I wanted. Are and you going to take it right one, now? That's the one I'm going to take right now. I'm going to take Arizona State huh. because – hello. I look at that situation that they're in, and it is similar to the situation Utah's in. And while Kyle Whittingham is a great coach, I like Arizona State's chances over Utah simply because I think that Herm's got a much better chance of putting together a more talented roster than we're likely to see at Utah because starting with Jaden Daniels and just playing the, the fact of Arizona high school football, there's a lot of talent within that state to begin with. So I think that raises the floor of what they could potentially do. And if they catch USC in a down year and an up year for Arizona state and they get through the PAC 12 title game, I think Arizona state is one of those teams that could possibly sneak in. as like a four seed. So give me the sun devils. That was my other team that I, that I had on my big board. They are now been removed. When was the last time Arizona State was close? They've been close? No. It's going to be my pick. I'm going to go with Stanford out of the Pac-12. Um, and this is a respect pick. This is like for the history that David Shaw has had. Consistent winner. Looked like it was maybe coming off the rails 2019 then a pretty nice turnaround. Now, this is a long play. Uh, possibly could have been a short-term play if Davis Mills didn't decide to come out. But um, I just trust. I trust David Shaw is going to put out a winner. I think the Pac-12, if there's like, we have you know all these other conferences talking about teams separating. USC, I do think, is that team to beat. But they're not unbeatable. Uh, so I'm going to look at the same thing with Oregon. They're probably the team to beat in the North, but they're not unbeatable. So I'm going to say Stanford. You want, you want some bulletin board material? Give it yeah. to me. My draft board, 20 teams. Stanford, not even on it. Same. Oh. <laughs> so, David Shaw, take that. Do with it what you want. David Use Shaw, it. I've got Pitt on my list, and I don't have Stanford. <laughs> I hope I hope that's exactly what you need to propel your program to the playoff, but I'm just being honest. Hey, David Shaw, ask these guys what their uh, picks were in locks, what their record was. <laughs> <laughs> Is it me? Oh, yeah. All right. So your last two picks, choose wisely. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here, and I was looking at teams that have made BCS or New Year's Six games to try to, like, refresh my memory. And there's a couple who have. Uh, UConn certainly <laughs> made, made a BCS game at one point, and right. I, I really don't know that I trust them. Uh, Kansas did as well. Right. Uh, and Kansas lost to – the Hokies, right? Who would not be a bad pick here, actually, um, if I had any faith that their current coach is going to get them back, but I don't because their recruiting is, ter is terrible right now. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do the long play here or maybe the short play or just the, the chaos play. Pit. Give me the AAC. Give me Cincinnati and UCF. Maybe in a chance that like some kind of crazy way they get in either by merit or by expansion or – whatever um or maybe conference realignment helps me out here but but give me those two they should both be really good teams this year and they have some long-term potential mike oresco says bud elliott says cincinnati ucf among the 20 programs that can be first time college football playoff listen i know you're listening i know that you're going to send this out as part of the next press release for the power six where the the number six sort of looks like the e in power this is good evidence there is belief i had cincinnati on my board i didn't have ucf but i i, I was thinking the same thing there's a there's there's got to be a point. Like if you've got to make some some tough decisions down near the end, do you really think that Oklahoma State's finally going to get it done? Or do you think that a program like Cincinnati or UCF winning at a high level year over year over year, eventually it breaks your way and, and you can get the selection committee's favor? I dig it. See, I, I approached it from a four-team playoff perspective and I didn't have a single G5 team on my board. Because you maintain no group of Is five it, team will ever. Until it's an automatic team. spot, they're never going to get in. All right, so we, Period. we should get a ruling from Coca here. Like, if none of our teams make the playoff by the time this thing expands, we, we should roll it. I mean, like, like let, let's let's reward my my, my future cast here. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Since we're getting wacky, I was going to take Cincinnati too. I was all over that one. And I was going to take UCF if you didn't snatch those two up because I'm supposed to be the guy that's pounding the drum for the group of five, specifically the American. But since I can't, and since we're getting a little wacky, I'm going to get on board the lane train. Mm -hmm. Give me Ole Miss. Why not? I thought it was a really, I did not see that much success coming as early as it did on the offensive side of the ball. Even, even on the offensive side of the ball, I thought they put up points. I didn't know they'd have that much success defense, low expectations. They can figure that side out. They have a young team. They got the quarterback back. They got both and John Rice Prumley back as well. There's some young talent. Lane's going to get after him recruiting. He's down there hanging out with all his old guys at the championship game. Like he's posting pictures. He's on social media. All that stuff translates. He's beaten Nick Saban before. Let's go. Yeah, they were, they were the next highest team on my board for the remaining teams. Uh, I'm going to go with a team that is not the next highest on my board, but it is my last pick of the draft and it is the second to last pick of the draft. So I'm going full Homer because damn it, if Michigan state can reach the college football playoff, so can Illinois. So take, I'm taking the Illini. Why not? Who could be us? Illinois for the Homer pick for Tom, the penultimate pick. I I'm here. Final pick of this draft last pick of my collection. And again, I've, I've said this because I've been scatterbrained before when we do these drafts and I do want to take some, some picks that I think will, will be fun, good to explain, but uh, I've tried to be disciplined and just stick to the big board and the highest ranked team still available. Excuse me. The highest ranked program does not have a head coach right now. I'm rounding this thing out. With the 1998 BCS champs, <laughs> I'm rounding this thing out with the Tennessee Volunteers. And Danny White, this is me saying, we believe that whoever that hire is, when you're making that pitch to, uh, to Vol Nation and to all the Vols for life, you can tell them, look, we can do this. We can have our first college football playoff appearance because Chip Patterson believes in you. Give me Tennessee to round this thing out. I will say of the remaining teams on my board, I only had one left on that were ranked higher than Tennessee and that's Oklahoma state. So I don't think it's a crazy pick for the 20th pick of this draft at all. For the 20th pick. Yeah. 11 again, 11 SEC program. program. Yeah. yeah. 11 programs uh, have made it. <laughs> we forgot. No one picked West Virginia. Oh, Coca's so <laughs> mad right now. Uh, and if we win another three rounds, nobody would. Okay. Would you, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> nobody took Vanderbilt. Uh, so sorry, Barton, We're, we apologize for that. Um, let's, before we do some of the, cause I do have some, some stragglers that I think would be uh, fun to discuss. Bud's lineup, uh, USC, Penn State, Michigan, Cincinnati, UCF, Danny's group, Texas, Wisconsin, Auburn, Stanford, Ole Miss, Tom's group, Texas A&M, Iowa State, Miami, Arizona State, and Illinois, and Chips is Florida, North Carolina, Utah, Iowa, and Tennessee. I like my group. I like Bud's top three better than anybody else's, but you, you ruined it with Cincinnati and UCF. <laughs> I, like the, I like the chaos play. Uh, if you any of us have to use their fourth or fifth picks, I, I feel like, like the sport's gotten really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't a, a sport where we actually uh, – are concerned about making sure that the 20th through 30th programs in the sport are, uh, are feeling included. It's just not really the, uh, the business that we're into. All right. I, Who is the biggest omission? Is it Oklahoma state? Probably like if you were looking at one and somebody like, I would say Oklahoma state, like a fan listening might have a beef like, Hey, why not us? Yeah. I mean, with some of I, the other teams we went with, had, had I not chosen Illinois, I was going to take Oklahoma state. So if not for me making a single homer pick, Oklahoma State would have been picked. I'm glad you mentioned Virginia Tech because the, uh, my, sh Virginia Tech was tanked in my rankings because of what you said with recruiting. I mean, Justin Fuente thinks that he can win with the transfer portal all-stars, and until they start uh, bringing in talent into the program that is good and better and then, you know, not – like Virginia Tech can be a top 25, top 30 kind of recruiting team. And right now they're what in the fifties and the sixties. 
And even then, they don't have any kind of continuity. Nobody's coming into the program and staying. Players are leaving. Players are coming in. So that that made me think that it's not going to happen uh, even in the long term, even though there's probably more history of success with Virginia Tech. Um, I had them on my list, but they were much, much lower than, uh, than, than I think I would have otherwise. No one picked – the winner of the Big Ten West, yep. the last two out of the last three years. Mm-hmm. They were the w- three teams left on my board that weren't picked. They were the third. Wait, hold I on. Had- Min- Minnesota? No, I had Oklahoma State, Western. Virginia Tech, North and Northwestern. Western. Yeah, they won the won the division two out of the last three years. We just I had Nebraska over them. Nebraska yeah. over Northwestern? Just because I don't think Northwestern can get players to get over the Ohio State hump. I just I I don't think Northwestern could beat Ohio State. I think Nebraska could could in theory down the line recruit well enough to where if they played their A game and Ohio State played its C game, you know, like that's the thing. If you're picking a West team, you got to win the Big Ten title. And I just don't think Nebraska or Northwestern can get players to do that. Hey, I didn't have Nebraska on my list. I had Minnesota. Did you guys have would- Baylor? Look, no, Mm-mm. didn't make. If the Matt cut. Rule was still there, I bet you I would have had Baylor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's I'm not knocking Dave Aranda. It's just it's I need to see it first. Whereas Matt Rule, I already had confidence in. I'm knocking Dave Aranda. I mean, all those punts inside the forty. Uh, I mean, that, that's <laughs> listen. That's, that's bad for the under college football team. Excusable. <laughs> no, no, <that's>, <laughs> no <laughs> I let let me be clear. I am knocking Dave Aranda. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is a lack of faith in uh, Dave Aranda and that Baylor program. And, uh, and Pitt, why not, right? I mean, Pitt can go and win the ACC Coastal and finish 7-7. Seven and seven. If you can finish 7-7, seven and seven, you can do anything in college football. <laughs> no Missouri? No. Uh, no, see, I, th- this is, that's a team that was playing for SEC titles not too long ago. It's just, I think that the SEC has become a lot more difficult. Do you, all right, so uh, grade my Tennessee over Missouri. W- would Missouri have been a better pick than Tennessee? Uh, I think you're but you're taking. I think you're taking the long, long play. Yes, <laughs> like five, six years down the road. It's it's imagining yeah. that whoever they hire is an awesome hire and that it works out and that all of this, you know, wilderness that's been going on for the last ten years or so ends up Look finally the talent that just there was just this exodus of talent like mm-hmm. how is that you know i mean i guess there's always can they come back like could uh henry 2020 change his mind yeah like he's yes. just entered yeah. the transfer portal so he hasn't officially signed with anybody right mm-hmm. right correct so they could so i mean that there's your hope is that the new coach gets hired quick and he talks those guys into coming back staying and then then you could be in business I think if you're doing Tennessee, it's a long play, right? Like yeah. we're, we're hoping nobody wins the next three years and Tennessee come 2024 is, is in there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think, I think right now Missouri's in a better spot than Tennessee. And I think for the next two, three years, Missouri could be in a better spot than Tennessee. It's just, I think that the ultimate ceiling of Tennessee is higher than Missouri's. Yeah. Our, uh, our, our Tennessee credit, I mean, our Missouri criticism makes it into Missouri game notes. So we know y'all are listening. We love you. And, uh, while we enjoy betting on the alpha nerd and using that for our, uh, for our own uh, calculations, they did not make the cut for the 20 programs to be next as becoming first timers in the college football playoff. You can follow him on Twitter at Bud Elliott three. You can follow him at Tom Pernell. You can follow him at Danny Cannell. You can follow me at chip underscore Patterson. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you.